Turn with me to Luke chapter 13. And I want you to look down to the 10th verse. And I want to tell you a little story, if I could. Can, can I have a little leeway? Can I have enough rope this morning? Now, y'all stay with me because uh, I'm a little charismatic. Amen. <laughs> Woo, son, Gil sings that song, and it lights my wood. That'll be all right. I'll get it. Nobody panic. All right, are y'all ready for this? And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. Now, just hang on just a minute. We'll get to the rest of it. But, you know, that word infirmity can mean a lot of different things. It could have meant that there was something wrong with her vertebrae in her neck and she couldn't hold her head up. It could mean that she was sick in her body some way and it made her weak. It could mean that somebody in her life had abused her to the point that she just couldn't look anybody in the eye anymore. But whatever the infirmity was, she could not raise her head up and had been like that for 18 years. Unlike the woman with the issue of blood, she has sought no doctor. She's just dealing with it. I want to ask you this morning, and you don't have to raise your hand unless you want to, but have you ever just tried to deal with something on your own? How'd that work out? Not too good. But she's been dealing with it for 18 years. It says she and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called to her and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Now can we go back and let's... Can we paint a picture? I'd like to paint you a little picture, if I could, for a little bit. Can you imagine this woman? She's getting ready to go to the synagogue. It is the Sabbath. She has been over like this, and I can imagine the only way that she can look is maybe to do her eyes up like this. Could you imagine how difficult it must have been just to get dressed to go to the synagogue? During my time of dealing with this leg, I found out that things that I took for granted that were just so easy, like getting up and getting ready, now takes a lot longer. And then you move on top of that, and you've just been wearing one shoe for nine weeks. It get gone pretty easy. And my little wife left me to the shoe myself today, so I found it. It's the reason I had to welcome the Holy Spirit this morning. Your shoe gets gone. You ain't got but one, George. What do you do? I said, I'll go in my sock if I had to. But the, the pain she probably dealt with just getting dressed, it don't say anybody was helping her. And, and for 18 years, she'd been going to the Sabbath, to the synagogue, just routine. Nothing ever changed. She would go into the synagogue bowed over and bent over and and she would take her place. Don't you imagine she probably sat in the back? Because when, when you, you come in, if you sit in the back somewhere, maybe nobody will see you and nobody will ask any questions. And she makes her way out the door. It probably wasn't easy to get the door open on her house. Or, am I helping you? Can you see it? And maybe she pushes the door open. Perhaps she probably has to walk with a cane I would imagine because when she's bowed over like that, her balance is probably not what it should be. And she walks through the dust down the road. It's just another routine Sabbath. And she goes, it don't say how far it was to the synagogue. It may be close, but whatever. Can you see her going down the dusty road and, and the rocks and the way people passing on the right and on the left, oblivious to her condition? You ever had anybody just look right through you? You're hurting and, and people just pay no attention. 
And she comes to the synagogue, and whether it had steps in it, I don't know, but I've also found out when your legs mess up, negotiating steps is something you just ran up and down all your life, and now it looks like a mountain to you, and you've got to climb those steps. And she makes it to the synagogue. I don't know if synagogues back in those days had doors, but she had to get the door open. And she comes in and makes contact with no one, no eye contact. It's just too much trouble. And she comes and sits down in the synagogue. Perhaps she sits in the same place that she has sat for 18 years. Do you do that at church? I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but you just kind of sit in the same place every time you come. Hands, please. Need your hands, please. And, and the church I grew up in, they put name tags up on the side of the, on the, on the pew. And if, if Sister Agnes or somebody donated that pew, you better not. Don't sit in my seat. She wouldn't have had a, a nice seat. She would have sat in the back because she was different. She didn't look the same, and nobody really wanted to deal with her. But this, this Sabbath was maybe a little different. As she went down the road, I think maybe that the birds might have been singing different. Have you ever got up in the morning and just felt something in the atmosphere like, boy, it feels good today. I, I feel like something good is going to happen today. But when you've been bent over for 18 years, the enemy will quickly dash your hopes and say it's going to be the same as it's always been. But she makes it into the synagogue and she sits down and she hears a voice that's different from any voice that she's ever heard before. It's a guest speaker in the synagogue today. And she sits down and the first thing the scripture says that Jesus saw her. I'm so glad that one day he saw me. I mean, in the mess that I was in, he still saw me, Hobie. He didn't, he didn't look over me. He didn't look past me. Matter of fact, I read that when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. He was thinking of me, a sinner, someone unclean and undone. He still saw me. I wasn't the richest person. I wasn't the best looking person. I wasn't the the healthiest person, but whatever the reason, he looked right at me and he saw me. Today, if we could see what's going on in each other's life, if a TV screen would pop up above our head and we could see what our daily uh, routine is going through, everybody would be trying to find the remote. Because a lot of us struggle with some stuff, but it's stuff on the inside. It's not stuff on the outside. You can look at this leg and tell, obviously, there's something wrong. But we can sit in the pews all dressed up with no cast on or anything like that, no crutches, no wheelchair, no walker, and nobody knows that there's anything wrong. We can smile, and people can't see past the smile. But the struggle's still there. I'm glad that Jesus can see my struggle. I'm glad that even before I ask him, he already knows what I need. And this woman with this spirit of infirmity for 18 years comes and sits down, and the scripture says he looked right at her. Then he's going to do something really crazy. He called to her. Now get this. Everybody is sitting out there in the synagogue listening to Jesus teach. And this woman comes in and sits down, he looks right at her, and he calls her. It does not say what her name is. It just says he had a woman with a spirit of infirmity. No Mary, no Elizabeth, no names like that, just a woman. But Jesus saw her, and then he called to her. I tell you today, whether you believe it or not, that Jesus is calling to you today, to each one of you. He knows all about you. He knows so much about you. Now, buckle up for this and, and write me letters if you want, but your name is written in the palm of his hand. He knows you. And when he called to her, don't you imagine the people sitting around her thought, well, is, he, is he talking to me? It, it must be me because he wouldn't be calling this woman. She can't even raise her head up. It, it's got to be me. 
And then Jesus says, maybe no, no, not, not you. Not, no, not you. You, you there that bowed over. You. And she, she looks up the best she can to see who's calling her. But you know who is calling her? Mercy is calling to her. Grace is calling to her. More than anything else that she needs in her life, church, hope is calling to her. Does anybody in here today need some hope? Come on. I just need some hope. I need to know that there's something at the end of the road. I need some hope in my life. Now the struggle is he's calling to her. She's got to get up from where she's seated and go to Jesus. Eighteen years bowed over and she makes her way. Gil, come up here for just a second. I can use this to kind of show you maybe. But just give me a note as I, as I walk. Just boom. No, no, I just want one. one. Another one. I want this little. It ain't pretty when she's going up there. She don't look normal. She's bowed over. But she's going to Jesus because there's nothing else left. Mercy is calling. Grace is calling. And she's on her way. Any of you remember when you got saved and you stood there and the, and the Holy Ghost started to convict you of your sins? And you, has anybody ever felt that first? If you don't, we're going to have an altar call right now. But... It makes you nervous, amen? And used to, we got seats. Used to, we had pews, and you could go to the church and find out who was sinning by looking at the, the shellac had been wore off of the pews where people had been holding on so tight. And sometimes, Gil, you get convicted of your sins. And you're standing there. And you look over and say, boy, I don't know what Gil's been doing. But it's sinful because I feel it all the way over here. Because I know the Lord ain't convicting me. It's got to be this man. <laughs> Let me scoot over just a little bit and, and get away from him because I don't know what's going on, but I don't want none of it. But he's calling to her and she's making her move toward Jesus. Everybody in the entire synagogue is looking at this woman, and for 18 years, she hadn't been able to look back. And finally, she makes it to Jesus. What's he going to do? He says to her, Woman, thou art loose of your infirmity. The one who spoke the sun, moon, and stars into existence was speaking into this crippled woman's life. And he laid hands on her and said she was free of her infirmity. And it says immediately she straightened herself up. I got to tell you something, church. Straighten up. Straighten up. Because we're living in a time when young people need to see that it's, you're able to be a Christian in this world and you don't have to walk around like you've been eating prunes. You can walk around with your head lifted up and with joy in your heart. She raised herself up. And then you know what she did? She began to praise God. Has anybody in here been bowed down? I met with a family yesterday that lost their husband and their dad. And just, I sat with them for an hour and we talked about their dad. And their heart was so broken and it was so heavy. And I don't know what the deal is, but here lately I get too emotionally attached, I think. I'm trying to counsel these people to tell them God is going to be with them and, and they can get through this, but there's tears coming down my face as they're crying. Good gracious, y'all. And they got in their car and they left and they went down the road and people passed them. 
And nobody knew that in that car was the hurting heart of someone who had lost a loved one. Nobody knows because everybody's just going where they're going and doing what they're doing. But I guarantee you, Jesus seen in that car. Do you hear what I'm saying? There's, there's a song. Come on, guys. It's called Through It All. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Is any 18-year-old, any 18-year veterans in here been struggling something a long time? Come on. Y'all don't lie to me. I'm 51 years old, and I can give you a list of stuff I've struggled with. I'm struggling now, amen? But through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I've, I've learned to depend upon His Word. Through it all, it's been 18 years, she said, but He's calling me. Woo, y'all feel that? It's been 18 years, but I'm getting to Jesus. It's been 18 years. They've been talking about me for 18 years. They've been looking past me for 18 years. For 18 years, I walked out of this church, bent over and bowed low. But this Sunday... My shoulders are back and my head is held high because I know my Redeemer lives. He touched me and I'll never, ever, ever, ever be the same. I felt His presence and I know He's real. He should have killed me when He had the chance, but now I've found out who Jesus is and I'm on my way to glory. Through it all. Now I know everybody's been up here praising, but this is different. This morning we're coming to Jesus. Amen? Now you say, well, I'm saved, Raymond. I'm not coming up there. I've been saved. Yeah, but you're stale. Amen? You're stale and you're dry and your church needs you. You may not have been, been listening here lately, but Jesus has been calling you. He's been calling you to step out of your box of ordinary. He's been calling you to get out of your seat of do-nothing and become a part of the kingdom of God. Well, I would get involved, but the last time they appointed me to something, Raymond, they just looked over me, and I didn't, I didn't get any praise, and nobody even thanked me for what I'd done. You better get over that stuff, y'all. He's calling. He's calling. I ain't playing with you this morning. Jesus is calling. Through it all, He knows what you've been through because He's walked every step of it with you. He just needs you to get out of the box and do something extraordinary. Well, if I come up there, they'll say I'm Pentecostal. Let them say whatever they want to. I told them one time in a preacher's meeting, I said, y'all ain't seen nobody like me. I'm crazy. You fooled around and let me experience God, and it's changed me. Through it all. It's going to cause something extra in your life. You, you'll leave here changed this morning, and you may like the way you come, but if you'll come up here this morning when this song, they're singing this invitation song, you'll be changed. Something will happen different in you. Maybe nobody will even notice it, but driving home, you'll know about it. When you go to work tomorrow morning, they'll know about it. What happened to him or what happened to her? They just look different. I've been out of the scene, Raymond. I... I had a job, at a, you know, at church, and I, I, somebody else is doing it now, and, and God don't really need me for anything. I'm just going to stay out of the way. You know how I know you think like that? Because I've thought like that. And I want you to stand this morning. They, they sing. You may want to sing with it. You may not even want to wait for the first note of, of them to start singing. You may want to come right now, but I want you to come all over the church, not just on this side or that side or that side, but all over the church, I want you to come.